problem of electric charge in insulators. I will then uh, show data uh, showing how we can obtain water with net uh, charge. I will talk about procedures and properties of water. And finally about charge exchange between the atmosphere and salt surfaces. And the atmosphere is a charge reservoir. This uh, topic, the only problem that I want to address, was summed up past year in this uh, short review with the American scientists with this question, what creates static electricity? And uh, you can read that uh, even though it has been considered a problem of perhaps 19th century physics, it has not really been uh, solved in many aspects and answers are coming from other places now. Well, the same uh, kind of statement has been repeated for a few years. I quote here two well-known authors in the area, Cass and Bailey, talking about the difficulty to make or reduce experiments, uh, the absence of uh, comprehensive theory, and especially the poor definition of the species res responsible for charging electrostatic um, for charging electrics. And that's the last quote I will make is by Shine. Shine is very uh, a person that could really make such a bold statement because he was for many years the head of research in um, Xerox Corporation Laboratories. And you know that Xerox is a successful company living on uh, electrostatics. I have to say that he published this paper after he retired from Xerox. Consequences of this situation are many. Safety problems, thus explosions, fires, loss of activity in pharmaceuticals, even though many important technologies are based on electrostatic phenomena. And in nanotechnology that becomes extremely serious because uh, nanoparticles, various nanobodies acquire charge that provokes powerful interactions much greater than inertial forces. These pictures, well, the first on top is from one of the Zeppelins, the Hindenburg, but the others are from flour mills, sugar factory, polyethylene processing plant. And what they show us is that charged with flour, sugar, and polyethylene, among other solids, are powerful explosives if they acquire electrostatic charge. The relationship between uh, water and electricity, and I will concentrate on electrostatics, was uh, raised long ago. Of course, Faraday uh, occupied himself on this topic. A very interesting report is by Lord Armstrong, according to which vapor is charged opposite to the water from which it is being uh, evaporated. And indeed, in being on the surface of the Earth, we should excuse me, uh, is that a pointer? I don't know if I'm not here. It's a small cylinder. I have it. I have it. Okay, sir, sir, it's all right. Thank you very much. Um, the, this is the equation for uh, electrochemical potential of charged species, which can be applied to define the equilibrium conditions. And it shows that if we have positive 
potential in the region, we should have excess cations, uh, sorry, uh, positive potential, uh, uh, excess uh, anions, and vice versa. And since on Earth we are uh, immersed in very powerful electrostatic field due to the condensed uh, capacitor formed by the ionosphere and the Earth's surface, then uh, almost everything on Earth's surface should show some excess charge. But this has been largely neglected in most cases. There are some other factors that are important. For instance, uh, every interface, solid liquid interface, shows uh, ion partition, gas bubbles within water and pure hydrocarbon gloves hold negative charge. That has been subject of uh, many papers. There is this very interesting experiment of the Kelvin proper. And uh, since IUPAC states that every pure substance is electron neutral, many persons tend to believe that water should be electron neutral provided it is pure. But I recall we are in a natural environment or even in a non tropic environment always under large electric fields. And it has been shown, for instance, by Amin and colleagues, that's a group from MIT, that water collected from very different sources always carries excess negative charge. They did not discuss the reason for this. The white side group also has been uh, paying attention to this topic and they uh, have made some statements telling us to consider non electron neutrality. Most of the dynamics that we use, we consider things to be neutral and we don't, we don't consider um, non zero uh, potential and consequently we neglect separation due to this, except in a very few areas. A few years ago, Pollock uh, published a very provocative paper, and I, this was the title, Can Water Store Charge? It was criticized by Corti Colucci, uh, replied, there was a replica by uh, Pollock, and this discussion um, stopped at some moment, but, uh, of course, without really uh, an agreement. In my group, we have been uh, studying the association of charging phenomena with water absorption or absorption. That was done in a um, number of papers. And I want to still uh, raise one question that has already been uh, raised here in this conference. There is obviously a huge amount of electricity in the atmosphere. And we don't have today a model, widely accepted model, for the origin of this electricity. And of course, we are not very successful at protecting ourselves from it and even less of using it. We enter this topic on by the small end when we started using uh, Kelvin force microscope, which is just a modification of the atomic force microscope, in which case the tip of the AFM is used as a Kelvin electrode, oscillating Kelvin electrode that allows us to measure potential along any surface, including insulators, without contact. These are many images that were obtained from many different polymers. These are all Kelvin micrographs. The size here 
is between 5 and 10 microns in different images. And what the contrast in these images show is uh, coded this way. Brighter areas are positive, darker areas are negative. So, there is one thing in common among all of them, mostly polymers, some inorganic solids. And what they have in common is that there is a pattern of potential distribution, which means a pattern of fixed charge distribution in any of these samples. Uh, to this day, I think that we have examined uh, 150 or so samples, and that's what's always obtained. So, I will now uh, describe the work we did to obtain water with that charge in uh, different ways. Induced by electrified metal, either dropping through a biased needle or dropping through a grounded needle, but passing through a biased link. So, in this case, there is no contact between water and the metal. It just passes through. And here it is induced by a non-contacting insulator. And then tell you some about the properties of this electrified water. I will describe the experiment with some detail because I think it is uh, important to see the controls. Water is pumped through a needle using a series pump. Needle is passed or grounded, and water passes through the biased metal ring. Water drops are collected within a Faraday cup, where charge is measured and surface tension determined by top volume and log profile methods. So this is done in um, seven steps. Symmetrical, no flow, no bias, flow, and grounded needle, flow, grounded needle, flow, bias needle, and uh, the same but in reverse order. And that's what we obtain. Charge as a function of time, no flow, no bias, no charge. Water flows with no bias, small noise, that I will talk about later. When it is grounded, no charge. When we apply 1000 volts negative, then each drop brings charge to the Faraday cup. You can see the steps here, until it gets here. And then we go back and charge is kept within the Faraday cup. Oh, sorry, I uh, had to change the computer, the movie will not go. But what this movie uh, shows is how the drop shape changes with uh, the potential of light. We start with drops, they get elongated and at uh, 7,000 volts we have a stream of water, no further drops. We can measure charge per drop, depending on the applied potential, charge per volume. You see that it changes uh, significantly. And we can also measure surface tension of the water, which decreases very much. So, charging water decreases its surface tension to a very low value and actually it, uh, when it uh, streams spontaneously, we can say that it gets to uh, zero or negative value. And that plot sums up the effect of the potential on water charge. It shows mostly negative region. The positive is essentially symmetric uh, to this. You see that the effect increases very much as 
the partition increase. And that's the lower voltage ridge, you'll see in more detail. You can see that um, that's a restation. It's measured from the drop profiles. Measurements are very fast. So as time goes by, we can apply potential, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, and take many um, surface tension readings. You see that it equilibrates very fast and uh, it's very symmetrical, positive or negative. Now, water dropping from a grounded needle, but through a biased ring without contacting it. As we increase potential, positive here, water drops bringing in negative charge. Here we stop applying potential, charge is kept there. Then we do a symmetric uh, protocol for potential change and it goes back. You see that this is very symmetric. So actually you can produce charges and you can titrate charges, positive, negative. Finally, water dropping from a grounded needle adjacent to a plastic, a charged plastic sheet. Well, this is not so nice, even though we uh, can accumulate negative charge and when we apply uh, positive, uh, the plastic with a positive potential, it goes back. But this is very important because it shows you that whenever you have water, especially drops of water or aerosol, and you have insulators around, and insulators have charge, and any handling, often the plastic and many ceramics, uh, will actually uh, impart charge to them. Then water in its presence will be charged. So, summing up, water is electrified by dropping from a biased metal needle. That's very highly reproducible. I did not show the data, but we measured also density and viscosity of the charged water. And they don't change. So, this kind of charging uh, I consider as an, a surface phenomenon, charge accumulated at the surface. So, dropping from the ground and needle and so on. So, uh, how we explain this? Well, mechanism that we propose are this. When the needle is, is biased, water passing through, uh, which minus ions are attracted to the surface. If this is positive, they are discharged, then water flows with excess protons and vice versa. So, in this case, water comes out positive when the needle is positive. But, when the needle is positive and water passes through without contacting, contacting the metal, then we don't have possibility for direct electron transfer, but we have possibility for exchange of ions to the atmosphere with the water following the electrochemical potential um, equation. Uh, now I will talk about the absorption part. The problem arose when we were calibrating our Kelvin microscope, which are always calibrate and very fine instruments. And uh, calibration is done by using um, Microscopic sample, that's uh, 70 microns, with stripes of metal, which are uh, interconnected with one with the uh, next. So they are interdigitated. When we apply positive potential to one set of stripes, they become bright, as you can see in this image, and here are the grounded, the, or the negative uh, set of electrons. 
and that's the insulating silica. That was built on a silicon wafer. So, obtaining images, uh, calming images, with this attack, we can observe this. Running at 50% relative humidity, and we start to run here, this is scanned one line, one line, one line, so on. So that's a time axis. Here, the image is very steady. We don't we see the stripes, definitely without change. Here everything is grounded. Here we start again to scan, but at 70% of relative humidity with positive electrodes here and negative here. And then we see negative charge spreading over the silica. So somehow charge is going uh, out of the electrodes and that's totally dependent on the relative humidity. Well, to cut the story short, the model that we used to explain this is here. On the silica surface, we have silanol groups, out of which H plus ions can discharge from the negative electrode, leaving behind silicate groups that are negative, fixed, and that remain in the surface until the system is short circuited and water can come in. Uh, sorry, water can come in to uh, eliminate charge, either by oxygen uh, release or by uh, evaporation of water carrying excess ions. Given this experiment, we decided to do one thing, which was just to observe what happens when you have powders, solids, and change the humidity on that. Well, that was done in, uh, for instance, in a stubborn silica sample, measuring atomic force and Kelvin image. And from these images, which give potential as a function of position, <coughs> we can scan lines. <coughs> and by looking at this, we observe that the electrostatic pattern in silica changes with relative humidity. The silica sample is grounded, in the, uh, shielded, but, uh, sorry, it is a uh, grounded support and shielded, but uh, you see, starting at 30%, relative humidity potential increases, and when you go back, it increases again. So, compared to water absorption, we have negative charge. In aluminum phosphate, we have the opposite. Depending on the uh, at higher humidity, we have more positive charge at the surface. And one thing that is, uh, to me, is remarkable are, is the size of the potential gradients that you can measure across these surfaces. Because these potential gradients can reach the megavolt per meter range. So they are very powerful. And that's something that had been uh, previously advanced by some people as an assumption, not really as, uh, as a proof. And of course, these gradients also change with relative humidity. So, uh, the model that we use is that uh, the ions from the absorbed water, uh, they can impart charge to surfaces depending on chemical specific interactions or by the local potentials. When you don't have, you don't, you don't apply any uh, potential, you will depend on the chemical specific interactions. But in any case, the atmosphere is a charge reservoir for insulators. And using this, uh, the end of past year, we published this paper showing that that's a very chemical application. We can detect acid-based sites on solid surfaces 
which is very important for characterizing catalysts and adsorbents by using Kelvin force microscopy. And the only reagent to do these uh, determinations is water, which by the way is aphotheric. So finally, I will mention some more methods. When you have isolated metals, uh, well, to, ver to verify the Kelvin measurements that I, I just showed, we wanted to do direct charge measurements using Faraday cups. When we started doing the Faraday cups, uh, Faraday cup measurements, we observed some uh, strange results. So, we went into doing control runs with the empty Faraday cups and we observed that changing the humidity, there was also charge buildup. That you can observe here. That these are cups made with um, chrome plated black brass. And uh, here, relative humidity is changed, the black line, and charge, in this case negative charge, builds up. You can short circuit, repeat again again, and this can go for a long time. And you can do this with many different metals, and the results are quite, uh, well, they always acquire charge, but copper, for instance, uh, acquires little charge, aluminum, a lot of negative charge, stainless steel, a lot of positive charge, and uh, so on for other systems. So, some results are collected here. As you increase humidity, corporated brass becomes strongly negative aluminum. Silicon coated aluminum does not, remains close to zero. Evidently, or verifying the hypothesis that this is a surface phenomenon, and that's a micro uh, alloy, stainless steel. So, we have these different behaviors. So, what we learned is that different metals can acquire positive, negative charge when you increase the humidity. And then you can make a capacitor that self-charges, which is shown here. That's a capacitor made with aluminum sheets and stainless steel. And here they, they are short-circuited, we are measuring voltage. So, the uh, humidity is uh, uniform. So, as we open the circuit, the capacitor uh, charges itself spontaneously. We are not doing anything. Here, short circuit. Again, again, again. Maximum that we managed to do were 600 cycles of charge, 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 discharge in this way. So, how it happens? So, I will tell here the idea. We have a cluster of water molecules in pages on a basic surface which picks up a proton, releases a negative uh, water ion, and becomes positive, and vice versa for the aluminum surface. It's very important to recall that almost uh, all, all these metals are always coated by oxide. So, as conclusion, water with a steady charge is reproduci reproducibly obtained. It's a surface, and uh, at least in these experiments, we don't have any evidence for both properties change. Charge tensor is mediated by water ions, which mine it was. Uh, Rayleigh ratio limit, Rayleigh ratio is the is a, a number that gives you the voltage at which a, a drop of liquid should explode, uh, should undergo long ex explosion. And um, it's given by a limit, and we found that this can be very largely exceeded under low field. There is always a confusion in this area between field and potential. Of course, they are interdependent, 
but uh, they do not work exactly the same. And also low Weber number, which is another uh, dimension. And uh, this agrees with uh, then with the main result that, that we have been collecting, according to which atmosphere is a charge reservoir for solids and liquids. And this is mediated by atmospheric water. And whenever you have absorption and desorption, you have ion partition and charge. So I acknowledge to the students and postdocs that participated from this work. They were re re listed in the references. I acknowledge the uh, agencies who paid for this uh, work and for the fellowships. And uh, this that I could not have working here, but is working in my computer. If you want to see, is the closest thing that I can uh, that I know um, to a lightning within a closed environment. Uh, if so, someone wants to see later. Uh, we change potential, change distance, and at some point you get a number of streaking uh, light uh, as in the picture that I showed the atmospheric electricity. Just the scale is much smaller. Thank you very much. What happens if you ground the metals? Uh, I take it you've not grounded the metals on which you see charge build up uh, with high humidity. What have you grounded? Yes. Uh, uh, if the metals are, are grounded, uh, depending on the thickness of the oxide layer, you can still see a lot of uh, potential gradients. You cannot go to very high potential, but uh, I say uh, very high is uh, many, many volts. But uh, I can have, uh, I think maximum that, that we observe is uh, the range of one volt. Because it may, it, 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 uh, it take a little bit, for instance. Um, you may have a very thin uh, aluminum oxide layer, but that's an uh, insulator. That's a very good insulator. So actually, you can build up charge on top of it, even on grounded metal. I have a slightly related question. I uh, see there is a common belief that when the humidity becomes lower, yeah, there is uh, high electrization. Like for example, they in Russia, when they, in winter they begin to uh, heat uh, houses, and you are so much electrified that there are sparks between you and metal uh, parts. So, uh, doesn't it contradict? Uh, how can you explain? Yes, uh, well, I uh, thank you for uh, asking this question because it is really essential. There is something that um, is not known to everyone, but you know, Erwin every Schrödinger, very important uh, physicist. Uh, Schrödinger PhD thesis was exactly on this phenomenon. He was observing uh, changes in charge dissipation from insulator surfaces and observed that uh, as you increase conductivity, charge imparted to the surface dissipates uh, easier. And the idea that has been around all the time is that as you uh, increase humidity, you absorb uh, water or absorb water that increases the surface conductivity which helps uh, charge to be dissipated. And that's true. Uh, nothing uh, against this. Uh, it also contributes. But if you look at data comparing uh, surface conductivity and rate of charge dissipation, right? You measure surface conductivity and rate of charge dissipation. Then you see that there is something missing. 
And we published one paper in the Journal of Electrostatics addressing exactly this problem. Uh, it's not in this presentation, but I can uh, resume it uh, quickly. <coughs> you take a, a PTFE <coughs> surface. You charge it uh, by friction, for instance, or, or corona, either way. And you obtain a pattern of charge. Uh, charge is never uniform. So you can map it microscopically and you obtain a pattern potential in different places. And you can keep scanning this surface for well, consecutively. You can take many scans. And then you can control the humidity. You can go at low humidity, higher humidity. What you observe is this. When you go to higher humidity, the overall surface potential decreases. Uh, was positive, negative. But there is, uh, when you compare the changes in potential from different pixels, you see that there is no uh, evidence of charge transfer by any surface mechanism. So in many cases, you can, we can see a pixel with a very positive potential, it decreases, is surrounded by others with negative potential, and we don't see the corresponding change in the neighbors. So, uh, not that I dare to challenge Schrodinger, but I think that the big effect of humidity that you mentioned, which is uh, absolutely correct, is not surface diffusion. I think it is largely exchange to the atmosphere, following the same mechanism. Right. But uh, this surely will depend on the water absorption ability of the, the surfaces. Um, if you take, for instance, uh, if you take hydrophilic surfaces, uh, in which absorption uh, of vapor is very fast, dissipation is very fast. And uh, if you go to hydrophobic surfaces, where you have a more uh, stronger patterning of surface, it is very easy to observe that uh, it's not diffusion or surface uh, migration, it is really exchange to the good surface. Um, in, um, actually there are two papers, in one of them, we paid special attention to the uh, very curious fact. Some points in a polyethylene surface would change potential much, much faster than others. Okay. And then we went to find out why. Well, polyethylene surfaces often have oxidized spots. Right. So, uh, to conclude, uh, electrostatic charges are really more dangerous under low uh, humidity than at high humidity because they last for longer. And what we should not do to build uh, electrostatic charges? We should not expose an item to very high humidity and quickly transfer it to very low humidity. Because then you build up, you don't, uh, don't give time for the relaxation, and if uh, water absorption is slow, um, we are going to keep this charge there. And uh, probably you have heard stories about uh, criminals, because they are criminals, that uh, specialize in provoking electrostatic explosions. And uh, I think that's one of the tricks they, they play. See? Okay, we're running a little late now, so if you have additional questions, check with the speaker. <coughs>